I'm going to talk about the subduction and initiation evidence that we have from the metamorphic soul of the Oman Ophiolite. I'm sure you all know where Oman is. Uh, it's up here, and all that black material is the Ophiolite. It's the largest intact Ophiolite on the planet, and the reason it's still there and beautifully preserved is because the Gulf of Oman is a still relic bit of Tethys that hasn't yet had two-continent collision. So the Ophiolite is anything up to about 20 kilometers thick. It's absolutely perfectly preserved. Uh, it's got at least 10 kilometers of mantle sequence, Hartsburgites and relic dunites, with a little bit of client peroxine down at the bottom. And the metamorphic soul is attached, welded onto the base of the uh, mantle sequence here. The Ophiolite has got uh, a, quite a complicated uh, Moho transition zone. And then the usual uh, isotropic gabbro, sheeted dikes, pillow lavas at the top. And the pillow lavas are all mostly bononitic, high magnesium andesite composition, which equates with the suprasubduction model. So the metamorphic soul is a very thin sheet, which is welded onto the base of the ophiolite. It was formed at much deeper pressures into the mantle. And the subducting plates are all old oceanic crust, probably Triassic in age, of the Havy complex, which is going down to form the proselytes of the amphibolites and the green schist beneath. So there's about 35, 30 odd localities of metamorphic soul throughout the Oman Mountains. And between the three of us, we've now been to all of them. And Matt and Josh, my co authors, have done all the uranium lead and the garnet dating work in this. Is uh, one of the problems that I'm going to uh, talk about in a minute. So the two best samples uh, regions where the ophiolite is still welded on in its original position to the base of the ophiolite is up in the north, the Sumania window, and down in the southeast, the Wadi Tain window. So one of the very best sections through where you can see the original contact, structural contacts of the metamorphic soul welded to the base is this Wadi section in Sumani where uh, you can actually put your finger on the subduction zone. These are the clinoperoxine garnet bearing amphibolites right beneath the pyridotype. And they go structurally down section to garnet free amphibolites, epidote amphibolites, and the selection of green schist fasces rocks. So here you can actually put your finger on the subduction zone. This is the downgoing place of the Hayby volcanics, which are the Triassic volcanics now uh, metamorphosed up to granulite fasces. And these are the Hartsburgites at the base of the ophiolite. Now, right up near the top of the Samal thrust, there are these spectacular large garnets with clinoperoxy, uh, which are indicative of the granulite fasces. A lot of the metamorphic soul is actually just plain uh, amphibole and plagioclase. The green schist fasces uh, sediments are mostly quartzites, mesa cherts, and marbles uh, down there. So. Uh, this is the Wadi Tain outcrop, where you can also see, apart from imbrication of the metamorphic soul beneath the Samael thrust, you can see very large-scale folding, isoclinal folding, and uh, there's also imbrication, so it's very dangerous to use the structural thickness of many soul localities without mapping out all these imbricate thrusts. Within the uh, Meta Church, there's a, a spectacular series of isoclinal folds and thrusts, and it's only a few stages of high strain later that you're into sort of uh, myelinites. So the metamorphic soul is a very narrow zone of inverted metamorphic rocks along the base of the ophiolite. The PC conditions are pretty well constrained, about 850 degrees centigrade and the 11, 12 kilobars. This equates to a depth that's over twice the thickness of the preserved ophiolite. So the heat is coming out of the mantle wedge. Uh, the green schist and the marbles are... are accreted onto the base of that. It's a very high ductile strain zone. And it's possible that the banded ultramafic complex at the base of the ophiolite, which is a little bit more lertolytic and has about 10 to 15 form blend, could also, also be part of the metamorphic world. So the models, originally it was uh, mid-ocean ridge model that's now being disproved by geochemistry and structure. Uh, so it is definitely a supra-subduction zone ophiolite. So this is from Josh Garber's paper, where the uh, PT conditions uh, are of the granulite fasces and the amphibolite fasces soul uh, are plotted on this uh, temperature depth profile. The Psi Hassat ones are the ecligites, which are structurally much lower down the section and 15 million years later. So I'm not talking about this subduction at all. I'm talking about the subduction underneath the ophiolite. 
And from all the geochronology that's been done in the past, uh, the Ophiol ice is extremely well constrained by many, many uranium lead zircon ages from trondromites, plagiogranites, and gabbros. And those ages are 96.5 to 95, and they are one and a half million years apart, and they are pretty bomb-proof ages. The ages from the metamorphic soul are exactly the same. They are almost identical in terms of uh, the spread of ages. They go a little bit younger to about 93 in places, but they were. the story was that the metamorphic ages from the soul and fibrolites are the same as the age from the gabbros forming in the crustal sequence above. This was all until uh, Carl Gwimet uh, published a series of Lutetium, Hafni, and Garnet ages, these ages here in red, that were considerably older. And you can see this diagram here plots all the ages from the, the Wadi Tain area and uh, the previous uh, data here. And these are all the ages that Matt Ryu has done in Santa Barbara and Josh Garber as well. And these are all extremely well constrained. The two sets of data that are completely out of kilter with all of this are the Lutetium, Hafni and Garnet ages, which are much older, 8 million years older. And these were published by Carl Gwimet a few years ago. And um, they've been widely quoted in the literature as dacing subduction initiation. Geologically, this makes very little sense because having an 8 million year gap between the older stages of the soul and the 96 million year ages from the zircon ages, what happened during that gap? That corresponds to about 300 kilometers of ocean spreading at fast spreading ridges like East Pacific Rise. And there is absolutely no record in the ge geological record of anything happening uh, during that time. You cannot take the metamorphic soul, the Triassic basalts down to 40, 50 kilometers depth and just keep them hanging there doing nothing for 8 million years. It just doesn't make any sense. When you look at the garnets, and these are from the same rocks, from the same Sumani Wadi Tain localities. So there's problems with the garnet ages. These are the big problem. I'm not a geochronologist, but I want to throw down the gauntlet to those of you that do garnet dating to explain to me geologically how to explain these ages. What are those garnet dates actually dating? Are they detrital? Are they inherited? Are they a mixture? We don't know. But certainly the garnets have multiple inclusions in them. They are very complex zoning. And that 8 million year gap is geologically very difficult to explain. So this is all the, the uh, data that uh, Matt and Josh have produced from Santa Barbara. And you can see the V1 Plutonism is the early Plutonism corresponding to the V1 Morbish, moist mauve lavas. The V2 Plutonism are the gabbros that are associated with the Boninitic lavas higher up the sequence. The mantle dikes are more, I'm going to ignore those for the minute. And the soul is all these age data here. This is from the Oman and this is from the UAE. Ignore this one here. This is the Bani Hamid granulite fasces, which is a thrust slice of deep crustal granulite fasces rocks thrust up into the middle of the Ophiolite during a later event. So the problem, what we think is happening is that the true ages of soul formation can be constrained by the uranium lead ages, 96.5 to 95. This is a very short-lived metamorphism associated with subduction initiation. And those were happening at the same time as the gabbroic magma sequence was happening at the top. Um, so this was the PT path published by Carl Grillmet and uh, using PT data from all of these uh, these uh, workers here. The Lutetium, Hafni, and Garnet dates that they quote were 104 to 103. And they interpret this as being the prograde part of this path. What they have to do then is to keep those rocks hanging down deep into the mantle for 8 million years before all the uranium lead zircon ages kick in here. And to us, that doesn't make any sense at all. So what happened? This is a paper from a deep drilling project that was Peter Kellerman's original idea from the Fanja area here, where they didn't encounter any of the old ages. All they encountered was 
a very thick succession of imbricated uh, amphibolite fasces rocks uh, in the central part of the mountains here. So um, we have huge question marks around these old ages. We do not know what they're dating. We don't believe that the uh, foot wall, the subduction initiation occurred that long ago. It certainly makes no sense geologically because on the shelf, the Albion was a time of completely passive, stable shelf sedimentation, likewise in the Hawassana thrust sheets beneath in the distal ocean basin. And it, there is just no record anywhere in the geological record of anything tectonic happening in the Albion. It's where one of the biggest oil reservoirs occurs in the central part of the Omar mountain belt anyway. So we think the whole thing kicks off at about 96, 97 million years here. So everything to the left of that red line has a huge question mark. Everything to the right is pretty well constrained, but the peak amphibolite fasces metamorphism occurred 96 to 95. The youngest of the uranium lead zircon ages goes down to about 93. And then the whole system was accreted, brought up from the subduction zone, accreted to the base of the ophiolite and transported by thin skin, crusting and tectonics onto the shelf margin. And right at the 15 million years after that, the continental margin was dragged down the same subduction zone to form the eclogites that we see deep down in the basement, which is a whole different story. Okay, so this is our model, uh, which we're going to stick to uh, until proven otherwise. <laughs> and um, as I say, uh, the Smale Aphelite formed in this very narrow time gap. These, these are from at least 40 different uranium lead zircon ages from up and down the entire mountain belt, 96.5 to 90, above a northeast dipping subduction zone in Tethys. The metamorphic soil formed at pretty much the same time which is another obvious uh, kick to the supra-subduction zone origin of the ophiolite. Um, and these rocks formed at 40 kilometers depth. So the heat is not coming out of the preserved part of the mantle of the ophiolite, it's coming out of the mantle wedge. Um, the older Lutetium Hafni of Garnet ages, big question mark, we do not know what they're dating. Some of the older Zircon ages are interpreted as detrital Zircons, caught up in the protolith, and some are metamorphic. Um, okay, so this is where the, we propose that the metamorphic soul formed. The <coughs> preserved thickness of the ophiolite is up here. These have to be brought back up <laughs> into the production zone in order to accrete to the base of the ophiolite, the mauve. And these are the much later Bani Hamid, which are a much thicker sequence of granulite fasces, metacarbonates, and metacortzites, which are not really true metamorphic soul rocks. They're tapping what is happening deep down in the crust beneath the thick ophiolite ages. And certainly all the argon argon ages were cooled by then. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, John. Yeah, very interesting. Um, you've talked there about, of course, you talked about the excavation of the soul. All, almost all of the red arrows are crossed. So, where, where, I suppose I was expecting some exhumation style arrows. Well, what's, what's the mechanism of the excavation? Uh, if you look at that arrow there, the top of the subducting slab is a normal fault. Oh, that's it. Thank which you. means everything is basically coming, you're burying material down, metamorphosing, and then bringing it up the same way. So the top of the metamorphic cell could be interpreted as normal sense duct cell shear zone. I see. But what's the driving mechanism for that then? Buoyancy. You're taking a plagiot rose with that all down into the ecclimatized mantle. At some stage, you've got to have something that drops the anchor off, so the slab detachment. And then when you're left with the hanging slab into the mantle, it comes up the easiest possible way, which is the same way it went down. 